Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Access. In this module, I want to show you how you can create your own report. This is part three of the sales database series, custom reports as opposed to using the wizard. So if I just have a look at what we did so far, if I open this report, which has got a parameter query for the invoice number, for type invoice number one, this is what the wizard produced and I've already fixed a little bit of this but you can see when you run the wizard it quite often truncates things and you have to go into design and play around to get things to work so I want to avoid doing that and I'm going to create this sort of report myself so I'll just close that off and I'm going to go into this query that's the query that that report's based on so that's the data if I just go into design of that for this little bit I'm just going to take the parameter box off because I don't want to have that running all the time when I'm checking whether it's working or not so now when I run that it will be all the invoices not just invoice one so there's only two invoices so close that for a minute so let's create a report so create report this time I'm going for report design straight into design and what you have to do is tell the report what it's looking at so it's looking at the query sales and then once you've done that you can get the fields there are all the fields so we've got this space now I want to do some grouping so let's have a look at grouping I want to group by add a group invoice number so we've got invoice number there and then I can put the invoice number in there which is the top one now you can just leave that like that or you can use a feature called concatenate and put some text around that but if I just push that up and you keep needing to look so you've got this silly little box and the label needs fixing all these sort of things are cosmetic that need to be addressed um, it's not urgent that you do it now but I'll just leave it like that and I will I will just change some of this to being bold so we can have that bold like so now the details is what needs to go next so we've got we want the company name so let's go for company and we want the customer ID company we just need the company product and quantity let's have a quick look at that view so it's going to come up with each company so I don't really want it like this either so I need to do another group because it's going to list every single one repeating itself and I just want that to be all one so let's do another group so we're adding another group add group so it's going to be the group that's going to be company so now you've got company header so if I look at that what's happening here so these two can go closer and we need to get rid of company and put it into this bit so that goes as the header and let's move that up a bit let's make that bold as well bold and then let's just grab these two shove them up to the top I should have lined them up really but you can actually line them up using a range but I don't want to do that just yet there's a huge amount of space here I'm just going to bring that up a little bit to tidy up so company is bold already let's have a quick look at this so now it's got it's easy train it's got the two products next to each other separated there and then it's got a Mac and the next next set there that's good because I'll put a parameter query on this and then it will change those so you can push these up a little bit because I want to put the price in there so the price comes in there let's have a quick look at that 250 200 so that's the price and then you've got that old net total that and this old as well so these three can come in now it's going to be for each one so let's just sit that there have a look now we're getting a bit cluttered so we've got Excel price that old 80 total total to pay total to pay that's all right but I need to obviously let's see what happens if I do do a range just let's get that in the set so go to a range and stacked have a look 
Now I need to sort of make this a little bit more prominent because you can't see, well you can see but it's it's not great. So you've got all this listed down, quantity 3, price, total load, blah blah blah. This is a stacked layout, I'm not too keen on that to be honest but let's have a look. Now if you don't want the individual prices and you just want to do the total prices, the summary price, you can you can get rid of all this and just add it into the report footer and then that will summarize it per customer so let's see if we let's do that so if I get rid of these three and just bring that back up now I want to sort of make this stand out a little bit more so let's go and make the format a bit bigger the font 16 just make the box a bit bigger so it does actually stand out I don't need the label. So the company, company name, and then make that a bit bigger, like so. Have another look. Keep, keep looking. That stands out. So that's quite clear. And I've now just got the basic information because I'm going to summarise each of these now in the group footer. So at the moment I've got the company header, but I haven't got a. There's group on company. I haven't got the footer on there and I want the footer on there. No totals, with totals, with a footer section. So I want with a footer section. Now you can select that and it'll do the totals, but I want to do the totals myself so you can see how that works. And when you look at this, what I want is total of these three really. So let's do this. You need an AB box. Let's just draw that in there make it a bit bigger than that so we've got net total old do I want to break down of that yeah so let's do a equals sum and it's going to be that old first of all that old close brackets let's have a look at that one see if that's worked 130 total that old Six twenty total that old. I'm not thinking that's right. Let's have a quick look at the query. Eighteen fifty hundred thirty is right, so I can't add up. So that is right. Just need to format that to pounds. So to go back into into that and get into properties and set that as currency. Have another look so the title for that is going to be total that old go back to properties uh, back to fields total that old total that so now I need to do same sort of thing for net total you don't have to break it down as, as detailed as this. So this is still going to be sum equals sum. Open the bracket. Square bracket net total old. Like so. Should be equals. And then this is going to be net total. Net total. Click off that format that to currency and then last but not least let's make a space we want another a b box and uh, we're going to drag in there this is going to be total to pay so this is going to be equals sum open bracket square bracket total to pay close square bracket close normal bracket format that to currency format currency have a look so that's that's brought that down for you 650 780 that's correct so let's just tidy this up a little bit so let's make all these boxes similar sort of size 
In a little video I'll go through concatenation so you can see how this can all be tidied up and look quite cool. But for now, let's just make this all bold. Format. Bold. And let's go for red, see what that looks like. Might look terrible. That's alright. Now, I could push that over there. Maybe I will. Let's just push that over there. So it sits on this side of the page. And have a look. Invoice number one, invoice number two. Now, what I also want to do is put some branding on there. So if I go back into design, I want my logo at the top. So if I click onto the top, there is an option there to add your logo. And this is my logo. It comes in about the size of a postage stamp, but you can make that a bit bigger and then can move it around. Now it's come in this um, arrange box, remove layout, so then it just comes in this box and you can move this around. So I'll just push that over to the right hand side. Now I don't like that at all, so I'm just going to insert that as a picture. Insert image, browse, logo, and I'll just draw it myself. Totally up to you, that's easier, I think, and that looks better. Now, I also want the date and time on this, so you've got date and time there, different format options, click OK, and then you'll have to move these to wherever you want them to be. Let's just push this down a little bit. Time and date. Let's have a look. All right. Now, I don't want this grey box, so let's get rid of that. Just put it to white. Not the font, is it? Let's have a look at that. Okay, so. Now all these boxes around here, all, you can get rid of all these in properties, and this space here you can also get rid of. But because that's a report footer, I could put a load of information on there, but it's just going to be an invoice. I haven't got anything in the page. Just push that up, I don't need that. You can bring this up. And pay, right, page numbers. Let's go for a page number. A page number of whatever. Top of header, bottom of footer. Centre. Yeah, okay, see it's shown first page, that would be no if it was, um, you'd get some company brand in there, click OK to that, have a look, page one of one. Now if I look at print preview, because I keep looking at um, design view, am I liking that, I'm liking that, and then, oh you're in the footer, you could also put your terms of payment and things like that, but that'll do for now. Let's just go close this. I'm going to save this one. Yes. And this is going to be RPT invoice. And OK to that. And now what I need to do is change this and put the parameter query back on this one. So if I just go into design on there. And then it's going to be back as what I said before. So it's going to be Shift F2 to zoom up. And then you're just going to put the criteria, the parameter box. So open the square bracket, type the prompt into the invoice number. That's what you want. Click OK to that. Save. Run. Invoice 1. So the query works, therefore, when you run the report, it asks you the same question. One, should I just get the invoice that you did? So that's all I want to cover on this little session. So hopefully that was of use. This is part three of the sales database. More to come. We'll look at forms in the next bit. How you can use forms to input data. But for now, that's it. Thank you for your time. I'll see you in the next one.